Okay, uh, thanks very much, Simon. Now, I guess in the roading industry, you always seem to have lots and lots of um, acronyms, and I think Simon just gave this one away a little bit, but I, was, I didn't know whether there was anyone that might not know what it means, so I thought I'd probably better prepare a slide just so that, that you do know what it is. And uh, I guess you can probably guess where I come from. And uh, it's good to see that you've got your Jaffers on the table. So that's awesome. OK, now, um, no, seriously, I guess uh, I've, I've used the, uh, the algorithm for, for quite a few years now. And I, I find personally that it's a, a great tool. And as I was discussing with Matt a little bit earlier, it, it is really that. It's a tool. It's a tool that we use to, to develop and give us a, a reminder, I guess, of some candidate sites that we've got out on our network for doing both our uh, rehabilitation and resurfacing. So it's a, um, it does that, it provides the candidate sites, and then you have to go out and you have to validate, you have to put in your engineering input, as Adam so rightly pointed out. There's so much our tools can do for us, um, but there's also a lot that we have to do for ourselves. And you know, having a well-validated program that's had um, good engineering input, to my mind, is, is at the top of the list, okay? And the models sit along down beside that. So this is really part of our decision tool. And what I'm going to do is just outline, I guess, or, or try to make you aware, obviously, that this project's happening. And I think those of us that have used it probably think this is, this is great because there's a few things that we could probably uh, improve upon. So, I guess, does everyone actually know what it does? I, I suppose I've just given that away a little bit. Uh, but the other thing is, I'm just interested, who actually uses it? People that use it, if you just stick your hand up, just so I can see. Doesn't look like we're going to create a hurricane by those, uh, those sort of numbers, right? So that's another interesting point, Matt. Wherever you are, can't see you because of the lights. But, um, yeah, over there. What do we use the outputs for? Well, well, I know what we use them for. I'm assuming everyone else does for assisting you to develop your Ford work programs, and also see, I guess, is the is your renewal program is it increasing? Is it decreasing? Are you on top of it? Are you got a backlog? All those sort of things are, are, are very useful information. Does anyone want to know more about it? Do people actually know what it does and what it's um, what it's all about? And uh, have the results been useful? Of the people that use it, which isn't, uh, doesn't seem to be huge, but if it has been useful um, in terms of the processes that you use, stick your hands up. I know I do. <laughs> yeah? OK. Looks like we've got a bit of, uh, bit of work to do there. Yeah, OK. Which is why we're doing the research. Well, I'm not personally doing it. I'm just. Uh, so I guess in terms of the, the project that's all underway, uh, they're con reconfirming the objectives of what's happening. I think the literature review work has been done. And there's a number of people on the steering group. Those that you've got getting or got grey hair like me, I guess we'll probably know quite a few of these names. Gordon Hart, the chairman's on it. Uh, Jim McQueen, John Hallett, Tins Henning, uh, Mike Tapper, Matt Hendry, Rod, um, Matt Rodwell and myself. So what is the primary purpose or objective of what we're doing? Well, I guess in a nutshell, it's really trying to improve the algorithm so that we can get better forecasting in terms of the timing and the, the treatment types that are coming out of it so that we can go and maintain our networks in a good condition and with the economic focus as well for the, for the um, least whole of life cost, for the short to medium term. I mean, that's what TSA is all about. So what's the research going to address? Well, I guess we know the algorithm is pretty dated. Um, it's, we're not saying it's not still current, but it is fairly old. Have things changed? What things have changed? Um, do we need to do a reality check on, on the outputs? Uh, what intervention levels um, are driving the treatments, and are those intervention levels still appropriate? And if there are some new ones, how can we reflect that in the algorithm? There's also a lot of data and information that's come from our uh, LTPP sites. 
Uh, can that be used? Has it been used? Or should we be integrating it in? These are all questions, I guess, that are, that are being discussed at the moment. Are the techniques that we're using to develop our programs and that what's been coded into the algorithm, are they still the best practice? Paul's just shown some new ones there. You know, are there things that we should be considering and um, updating and changing into what we're doing? Change in economic parameters. Are the current ones that we're using appropriate or do we need to be doing something else? I know there's been a lot of talk around um, maintenance costs and I, I think those of you that have been involved in that area will probably know what I'm talking about, but it's trying to make sure that that the maintenance costs that we're actually using to get these treatments, that there actually is the evidence based and backed in behind it to support it. So what are going to be the key outcomes? I guess some of these could be up for debate, but this is, uh, this is my uh, view of things, I guess, at the moment, and those that was, that was in the documentation is um, reviewing the usefulness of the current TSA, how it's being used, um, where is it not being used and maybe why is it not being used? Gather some uh, practitioners' recommendations for improvements and the reasons for those improvements and also try and integrate back in any of the findings that have come from our LTP, um, the long-term pavement performance work. So the, we want to have a, um, develop and improve the algorithm that optimises the whole-of-life costs that gives us a, a good basis or candidate sites for our three-year forecast, not just maybe one or two years, but that's the three years. Um, recommend the need for both the reactive and the planned works. That it reflects the risk of delaying work. I think a lot of us are often aware of that and we know the engineering side, but like um, I think Adam was saying before, it's not documented and maybe not incorporated into our processes so well. And it needs to be relatively simple so that we can understand what's going on. So the algorithms also need to take into consideration uh, the current economic parameters that we're using. Are they relevant? Are they uh, current? Is it actually uh, using that? Are we doing a BCR or are we doing an MPV, that, those sort of type of analysis? What's the context of the site? You know, do we need an urban rural split? Is that important or not? Uh, what's the current and forecast traffic demands? How's that going to impact? The road classification and level of service, are we needing some splits in there? Uh, some of the other ones around the benefits of seal widening, shape correction or similar works, you know, what are we going to include into those? And again, from the findings that have come from the LTP program, what are we going to uh, put into there? Are there some key things around pavement strength that we can, can use? So. That's basically it.